Hi everyone, um, welcome back after the Christmas and New Year period, I hope you had a good one. Um, we're going to carry on with engineering science, Mr Lawson is going to focus on the revision of topics as a result of the prelim and I'm going to continue to introduce new content to you. So <coughs> one of the things that we need to talk about is pneumatics. Now under normal circumstances we would deliver pneumatics practically but obviously we can't and we can't afford to wait. Now, as far as the SQA type of activities go, you know, obviously they don't they don't really ask you to do anything practical. And um, they might ask for a build or a simulation, but that's the minority of the marks. The vast majority of pneumatics marks are developed through um, theoretical answering questions, um, drawing components, recognizing components, explaining operational circuits, and um, doing a bit of maths. Right. So we can, as much as we normally deliver it practically, I can still deliver it theoretically. Right. And that's probably our best bet right now. So, um, let's carry on with this. Now, pneumatics is um, it's a bit of a niche um, engineering topic. Um, what I want you to do is, I want you to go to YouTube and search for what is pneumatics. And you will find um, the, these two videos at the top. And I just want you to watch these two videos. That adds up to about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, while you're watching those two videos, I want you to be writing down answers to these two questions. What are the benefits of a pneumatic system and what might uh, pneumatic systems be used for? Right? Just to give you an idea. Uh, essentially, before you watch the videos, pneumatics is about using air to make things move. Right? That's why it's really nice for us to use in schools because it's relatively safe. Oh, I might have given you a, a benefit there. Right, so go ahead and watch those two videos and write down. Now, bear in mind the way I'm going to deliver this stuff is I'm going to put videos up, and within the videos, there's going to be lots of information and there's going to be tasks. Right, and then I'll set an assignment on Teams where you can share your results of the tasks that are in the videos. So, don't think that just because I'm saying this, that I'm not going to try to look at the, the stuff that you do in response to these. Right. So, yeah, go ahead and watch those videos now, right? Alright, I don't want you to go any further in this video until you've watched those two YouTube videos and answered these questions. So, from this point on, you should have watched the videos. Another uh, resource that you should be using is, and I've put a link to it in the chat, is in the Engineering Science um, page. Um, so you should you should be able to get at engineering science. If you don't know how to get to engineering science, the Airdrie Academy's engineering science page. From Glow, there is a a tile on here that takes you to Airdrie Academy's own. Is it SharePoint? Let's check SharePoint. See. Oh, on. Yeah. Right. So that SharePoint tile takes you to here which is Airdrie Academy's own page, and there's engineering science down there. You click that link and it takes you to this page. Let me just get rid of that. <coughs> it takes you to this page, and you can go into documents, and this is where you'll find all of the notes for engineering science. You'll find uh, any board notes that I've created for classes over the years in PDF form in there, PDF for students. Um, you'll find past papers. This is basically the pupil share drive, but it's on Glow, right? Um, and in mechanisms and structures this is where all the pneumatic stuff is and probably the most important there's, there's two documents in here that you would use so in national mechanisms um, you'll find um, a national 4-5 pneumatics document and a pneumatics and 12 assignments document the pneumatics and 12 assignments is what we focus on practically and it's what I'm going to base this video and any other videos that I do. I don't know how, how much content I'll do in one video. I might end up doing two or three. Okay, so, um, yeah, this is the kind of stuff I'm, I'm going to be focusing on up until it gets to the maths content. We'll switch to that one because there's no maths content in this one. Right, okay, so we're going to carry on then. You've watched those two videos. You've got answers to those questions. Fantastic. Uh, what the SQA asks you to do is they ask you to draw symbols. They ask you to recognise symbols. They actually explain the operation of pneumatic circuits, predict what's going to happen, fault find the pneumatic circuits, actually do all that kind of stuff. So, symbology is really important. Every symbol that I draw, you should draw. 
every uh, symbol that I label, you should label because you're going to need to learn them off by heart. Right, okay, so let's start off with um, uh, f the fundamental and very important ones. So in one of those videos it talked about air receivers, I'm sure the other one would have talked about compressors at one point, okay, as the source of this compressed air that makes things move. We have a symbol that's called main air, right? Main air represents um, one of these receivers or compressors, right? So the idea is that this is where the stuff is stored and we would plug a hose into that. And that, you know, this, whatever we use, we short lines sticking out of these symbols, we would refer to that as a port. That's a place where you can attach a hose. So this is essentially us saying, this is where you attach a hose to get um, access to the compressed air. Main air would be described as air at the highest pressure in the system. It's the that's the the one that you use. Main air is the one that you use to make cylinders move. Okay. And we also have exhaust. One of the videos talked about you know, one of the reasons, one of the benefits of the pneumatic system was that it's clean. And the idea is that it's clean. You can exhaust the compressed air back out to atmosphere, back out to the room. So there's the exhaust symbol, so you'll see that used an awful lot. You see both of those symbols used in nearly every single pneumatic circuit that you look at, right? So that just means connected back to atmosphere, connected back to the room. Okay, the first, the short video, the two minute video that you watched, that was a... I see my wee drawing pads kind of faltering here. So... The first video you watched started off focused in on uh, a cylinder. Now cylinders are the most important components in a pneumatic circuit. Uh, they're the muscles, they're the ones that do the actual work, they're the ones that do the moving, right? And there's two different types and there's some terminology around them as well. Okay, so um, the, there's a, a simple one and a slightly more complex one you need to draw these symbols. You need to be able to draw these symbols without looking at notes. Right. So there's like the cylinder body with the, the piston inside it, the, the, the wee cylinder head, the wee piston head inside there with the rod sticking out of it. There's the port. And you can imagine that if you introduced air pressure on here, the pressure in here would build up high enough that it would push that to the right hand side. As it's drawn right now, it's described as being in-stroked. Again, this is terminology that you need to learn. In-stroked, or you can use the word negative to describe an in-stroked cylinder. The cylinder is negative or the cylinder is in-stroked. When you provide that air pressure and it moves out this way, that would be called, yeah, you've guessed it, out-stroked. or positive. Fantastic. So you can see here, this is there's one port on here. To make it outstroke, you introduce air pressure here. How do you make it in-stroke? Um, this cylinder, the simple one, has a spring inside it. So that's part of the symbol. Okay. So that's the complete symbol for a single acting cylinder. It's called a single acting cylinder because you only use air for one of the two uh, things that it can do. The spring does the other one. So um, we use air to make it outstroke and the spring makes it in-stroke. It has its, it has its uh, limitations because the spring, you can't really control much about the spring. You can't control um, the strength of that spring. It's the, the, the strength of in-stroke is dictated by the spring that's inside it. There's not much else you can do there. Okay, so that's a single acting cylinder. The other one is a cylinder that has no spring inside it. The same terminology applies in terms of in-stroke and out-stroke. Um, and the, the, the symbol starts off the same. Oh, I'm getting lazy. I'm drawing on a wee drawing pad here, so it's not ideal. This one has two ports, and it's called a double acting cylinder. This means that you need air to outstroke it, and you need air to in-stroke it. Now, it requires a little bit more complex control because you can imagine and this is the kind of thing that we, we show practically you can imagine that if you provide an air signal here it'll outstroke if you turn that air signal off if you remove that pressure it, the, the cylinder will remain outstroked 
unless something acts on it, like gravity or the weight of something or some other mechanism. If you want to instroke it, you then have to provide air signal here to instroke the cylinder. And again, you'll only be able to instroke it if the signal on this side is gone. <laughs> All right? So it gets a little bit complex. But that's that's the basics, okay? So, you know, we might uh, draw um, really, really simple circuits like, um, and I, I do want you to copy this, right? Uh, or, uh, you know, I want you to keep up with um, this, these type of circuits, right? So you might take a single acting cylinder. I'm going to start cheating from this point on, I think. I'm going to copy these and group them so that I can just cut and paste them instead of drawing them every time. But you will have to draw them. Nothing wrong with that. Right, so there's a single acting cylinder. So it looks like that. Let's get that and group it. And I can attach that to Mania. Ooh, there you go. Now, if I built that circuit, as soon as I put that hose in or turned the compressor or whatever, the cylinder would outstroke and be jammed outstroke. There's also a question that there's obviously air on this side of the cylinder head, so when it outstrokes, where does that air go? <laughs> you know, technically that would be a compressor. So the reality is that single acting cylinders, they do have another port on them, right? They do actually have a port there, but it's only there to let the exhaust air out. It's not there um, for in-stroking purposes, right? So don't get confused as to where that air goes. There is another port on there, and sometimes it's problematic when you when you're trying to find a single acting cylinder um, in amongst a bunch of components because sometimes they look the same. Sometimes they've got ports on them. Sometimes they've just got a hole in them for the exhaust port. Um, so that that would be a really simple, uncontrollable circuit, right? But at least it would show you the thing moving out of me. And um, one of the other practical things we do is we take a double acting cylinder. This one drawn in it. Copy it. So you're not waiting about for me everything. So we take a double acting cylinder. <coughs> and we do that. There you go. So as soon as you again, as soon as you make that connection, turn the compressor on or whatever, or open the the open the main valve that cylinder will outstroke and remain outstroked and be stuck in that position. Um, one of the exercises we do as well is we take a double acting cylinder and we give it a connection to the compressor on both sides. <coughs> and we ask, well we get people to copy this down and we ask what's going to happen, can you predict what's going to happen? And the most common prediction is that people say, as soon as you turn this thing on, the cylinder will be stuck in position. It will be stuck in whatever position it started in. So, like you know, with no air pressure on these cylinders, you can you can physically manipulate them. You can pull it out to half halfway, and then when you plug it in and turn it on, the expectation would be that it's stuck in that position. The reality is that's not true. And the reason it's not true is that inside these cylinders, these cylinders are based on or cylinders. They're based on circles. So the, the face that moves on this side on outstroke is a full circle, whereas the face that moves on this side is a toroid. The area that the air pressure acts on, on outstroke versus instroke, is different. It's a bigger area on this side, and therefore it develops more force. So the force on outstroke is higher. Um, so when you build a circuit like this, the cylinder will very slowly outstroke because of the difference between the two forces. Uh, okay, so I, I don't. Uh, you've, you've had tasks and you've had some questions. Um, what I want you guys to do, uh, as far as this video goes, is to make sure that you have drawn these down. And I've I've given you verbal descriptions of what would happen. I want you to write those descriptions out on what would happen. And this, you know, there's a particular amount of detail here, so you'll have to rewind the video and listen to it again. I want you to write out. Um, copy out these circuits and write out the description um, of what's happened. So, uh, copy out these circuits and explain their operation. Ensure that your explanation includes the correct component names and connection names. So, you should be referring to 
um, main air exhaust um, single acting cylinder double acting cylinder okay right and call it quits for this first video then thank you